Thanks, Mom. Moms are pretty much the heart counter of every single Oath player. Oh, of course. You, you dad or your watch. animal. Yeah, dad or your animal, exactly. I mean, in your case especially. Uh, yeah. Some might think, well, well, how do we counter Kokizi? I mean, do we pick Hidden Heart or no, we just pick his mom against him and he's gonna <laughs> see the video. Alright, so anywho, we have moved over to the Netherlands versus Indonesia match, as you can see on stream. Um, we're going through Skyclad once again. Uh, the score is 1-1 at the moment. And it's the same approach to the 8th map as before. So the combos are really uh, good for the Netherlands side, also the accuracies. Amnesia still holding the double S. Ooh, there might be a potential connection issue for long existence. Hopefully, they are still playing and their score will be submitted here as we are way past the 30% mark on this thing. So, if there is a drop from him, that is going to be incredibly unfortunate. Indeed, uh, I mean, depending on when he decides, if he decides in the first 30 seconds, then there might be a rematch. But as, looking at uh, as they just played until this part of the map is the ending, I don't think it will be that. And it's gonna be another point for the Netherlands. Oh, but then SJ Sammer died at the end because he completely butchered up the patterns. Oh, that is not good. And I think that actually it's gonna be a point for the Indonesian side. A free versus free in the end. That came absolutely out of nowhere. Maybe it was just his mom coming in and countering him because that was that was really uncharacteristic. It actually looks like Netherlands will pull that as a victory, even with the um even with the fail there, as um uh, Indonesia did see a disconnect there, so that Definitely hurt their score. Only a hundred thousand point difference, roughly, um, between the two. Oh, if long existence wouldn't have DC. That would have been a victory for Indonesia. Indeed, indeed. Looking at the end of the match, uh, if it would have been a three versus four, then that definitely would have been a a big difference. But the Netherlands, we we are used to seeing a bunch of fails from the Netherlands at the end of the map, uh, losing them the score. They've been pulling quite a few Wapu Fours at the end. Um, I mean, we've, we did see that yesterday. Oh, okay. So my score was a little bit on the um, bug side there. It says that Blue actually only won that by 19,710 points. So that was a lot closer than we thought. Indeed. So apparently the uh, tournament client was just... Uh, showing the wrong uh, numbers, which, you know, just as an information for everyone who watches in the stream, um, it's, that's absolutely uh, normal because sometimes packets drop and uh, sometimes information might not be 100% up to date. If you want to know the real uh, result of something happening, just look at the MP link. You have the raw values sent by the clients and have everything updated and sorted and synced up. Yeah, and the MP link will always be the go-to. Like, if there's ever a reason where we have to, like, break it down and it's too close to call, the MP link will always have the detailed information directly from the client. Indeed. Ooh, nice. It looks like we're going to go with how do you do. Not to be confused with the other Nightcore how do you do. This one is the Casada remix and super fun. So it's gonna be the uh, hopper map, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So hopper coming in. I'm not sure what they played to get to one one. Yeah, this one's gonna be. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Bless you. Oof. This one is pretty simple. If you've got the main bait. Uh, if you get the main beat line down, even with hard rock, not as difficult as you might think. But this one is very easy to make some accidental accuracy drops on. Dropping combo isn't very, um, uh, I, I wouldn't say it's very apparent or something that we'll probably see too much, but accuracy drops. This one's definitely an accuracy fight. 
Um, I actually would disagree in that case because we've seen so many misses on this map. It's not uh, as long as you usually want for a TTV size map, but it's not as long as a full song either at three minutes, which is a little bit weird to play. Um, I guess my nightcore bias is setting in. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we've seen so many players uh, miss uh, on, on this map, and it'll just get decided by the amount of full combos actually in each team. Very true. Uh, no, more like allergies to Twitch chat. Yeah, as long as you're not getting raised by your own cat because you got scratched. No, I hope not. I, I really hope not. Scratched and a bitten up, Seatrot still commentating, what a trooper. Ah, uh, it's no biggie. Uh, man, one time... <laughs> True story, guys, don't ever let your cats watch a Tyco World Cup. They will destroy your monitor. <laughs> oh, well, uh... Yeah, you know, you'd think with standard mode they'd be going nuts because the cursor moves everywhere, but they don't seem to set my cat off. What triggers my cat is Tyco. So, sounds like a one-sided abusive relationship with your cats. Oh, she's she's 25 pounds of mean, and I've had her for 14 years now, so she's old and mean. So you oh, know, Lord. you don't really you don't really tell her what to do at this point. She just kind of exists. Yeah, hopefully she she's not gonna get grumpy. Uh, especially looking at these circles, not for not. Uh, not trying to forget that these are circles and not some kind of ball of wool, for example. But look, coming back to the match, all FCs coming in, a few accuracy drops, oh, but wow. then again, there's a few combo drops. Moodbreaker, Moodbreaker just dropping on a very simplistic part, though, there. It might be a little bit hard to get into the 100 picks uh, to begin with because just the sheer difference of approach rate to the last map. I mean, we did Very see true. an approach at 8 map and then now an approach at 10 one. Uh, Rinsler also going to see a miss there. Uh, this one should be pretty easy for the Netherlands. Kaishiro here definitely not going to have too many problems with the night uh, with night cores. Synchro Star will find itself a miss. But um, still looking to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, we see a bu bunch of misses all around. Once again, the map gets designed by the combo, and in rare cases by the accuracy. I'm just, I'm just so surprised that we're seeing misses on this. Like, the patterning itself isn't really difficult. But then again, like you said, like it's meta towards how it's mapped and the rhythm it is, is a little bit different than what we see nowadays. It's very simplistic. It holds a lot of one half, and then you have a couple stream sections, but really, I guess, just reading the approach rate is probably where we're gonna see misses. Indeed, and uh, if you just look at the map uh, really, really closely, you can see that either the, the spacing is uh, really large or, half, or exactly half of that. You can definitely see the distance snapping in the map itself. It changes between two times of spacing mm -hmm. and isn't really as fluid, uh, fluid as maps nowadays, which uh, pretty much shows that it's a 2010, 2011, 12 map. Still using quite a bunch of uh, distance snapping. I think it's, I think it might be a little bit newer than that, but at the same time, um, Anastasia probably pulled a lot of them uh... Yeah. inspiration from other nightcore maps and nightcore maps are very um i wouldn't call them jerky but um yeah they're kind of jerky let's be honest here uh, as you <laughs> say they kind of go from uh they usually either have uh very um uh, if it's anything i've touched it's always symmetric and then very mean in certain sections and then Indeed. you'll see uh other nightcore mappers and just mappers in general that uh, go for this kind of approach where it's very consistent spacing met with uh, increased spacing in certain parts of the song, usually around the Kai section, stuff like that. Um, that will be the third point for Netherlands though. Uh, they are at potential match point now here. Indeed, let's see how Indonesia is gonna respond to that. 
Oh, actually, that's gonna be Netherlands pick uh, because uh, Indonesia did pick this other uh, map. Oh wow, are they gonna do Blumenkrantz? That actually um, would be awesome. Synchro Star, I believe, definitely is capable of playing it pretty well. So is Kushiro. I'm not sure about the rest of the Netherlands uh, setup. I can dream. I definitely would like to see a Blumen plant. <laughs> and it's gonna be Big Black, one of the <laughs> hardest maps in the entire game. It's so OP, it's not even on the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Six Star is gonna be really good coming into this, uh, coming into the Blumenkrantz pick. <laughs> it looks like we're gonna go with a tail, though. Uh, the being good at uh, playing Blumenkrantz was actually a uh, reference to his performance yesterday where he did FC it, but missed at the ending and then died. And then pretty much en <laughs> ended up giving the point to the opposing team. Oh, man. Which is the reason why he said, fuck you, force. <laughs> oh, man. Gotta... Gotta love that and also mood breaker like have a good one you did pretty well nice plays there you guys can still bring this around don't let them intimidate you you've got this indeed well yeah, i think netherlands should definitely pick blumenkans because they definitely showed good prowess on that pick I feel like maybe they probably shouldn't be listening to us too much. <laughs> but it's like they got a direct line. <laughs> well, they're going for Artail, uh, the more common pick of, on 180 VPN. At least on this pick, you cannot die at the end. And if you do, then I don't know what you're doing because the ending is really slow and shouldn't make, bring you uh, to die at all. And, and should actually revive you if you died before that on a harder part. So great uh, safe pick by Netherlands uh, because they will not uh, lose uh, by the death of a teammate. Mm -hmm. Great strategy all around. I really liked it from the Netherlands coming in. All right, seeing some. Uh... Seeing some good sportsmanship there, getting uh, some good luck, have funds out here. Potential match point for the Netherlands. Indonesia's chance to stop that starts now. Belief in Indonesia. Maybe they can get another point so they can't pick Blumenkrantz. Well, we're gonna have a slow section coming in, then a few awkward sliders, which are gonna drop a few aggressives. It's maybe even combo if you're not paying attention. And then we'll have a bunch of streams for the majority of the map. Afterwards, a calming part, a one third uh, time signature part, which might throw some people off guard with the speed change. And then a really calm ending, which is not gonna bring any uh, members of the Netherlands team to fail. So as Jade Sama and uh, Synchrosar both are pretty safe on this map. And we do see some breaks by as Jade Sama and Lonnie Master. I just had to double check if his name really is Lolly Master, if it's just because of my involvement with the OS community that I just completely took it for granted that there's Lolly in there. Well, yes, it is Lolly Master indeed. The one and only.
the advantage thanks to an early miss by Noah is going to be in Indonesia's side. Maybe a reverse sweep uh, coming up. But the one third part is, is heading into our, our direction and this is going to be the part which makes or break the combo. If you're not used to these spacing uh, changes. Oh, and we do see Noah and Reusa missing, both on the uh, longest one third part of the song. Or at least the sequences of circles. And now we do have the calming uh, after the storm, and I don't think it's gonna be enough for Netherlands to come back. The difference is 100,000 points, and it's actually closing in, but as long as there are no accuracy drops, who knows, anything can happen. But the last few slides coming in and the accuracy drops are coming in. The gap close to 60,000 points, but it's not quite enough, giving the second point to Indonesia. And who knows, the Blumenkran stream is still alive. All right, that's actually a very impressive play by Indonesia managing to um, uh, prolong that and deny them that win. Yeah, seems like the Netherlands going for the for the safe route that none of their team members can die isn't really the best course of action. Maybe they really need that risk to potentially die at the end to win the round. But I really want to see Boom and Cunts. Oh, dude, so do I. I have yet to see it. Yeah. Yeah, Twitch chat for sure. Press F for Blooming Cons. Or, or Riot. <laughs> Blooming Cons or Riot. Oh, and it's going to be remake and not Blumen Kranz, unfortunately. Aww. Press F to pay respects, that is not going to be uh, Blumen Kranz, it's going to be 1OK Rock Remake. A rather old map, seems like they want to get this with a tiebreaker and still try hard. I, I don't fault them, I really don't fault them. Because if they really want to try and beat the Netherlands team, that's the way to go, going by the most comfortable picks available. Remakes still pretty nice. I like the other OK Rock uh, song on this um, uh, like map pool a little bit better. You mean the uh, the normal one, the normal one OK Rock? Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit more um, modern in the sense of the mapping style, while this one is more of an older style. Well, you need that one uh, obligatory one OK Rock uh, map in your tournament, the map pool. Very it's, true. It's, it's pretty much the same uh, in community tournaments, except for Camellia. There's always one Camellia map in the map pool in a community tournament for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, and for Twitch chat, uh, just to see what I have to deal with, guys, here you go. This is what I'm dealing with at the moment. So I do apologize if for whatever reason. You know, I, I kind of disappear for a moment, but I am not getting any type of love. Indeed, but uh, at, at least we'll have uh, all the teams duking it out. And oh, at least sure. we'll have the banter of the chat to, to entertain us in the meantime. Oh, they'll, they'll see, they get to see a kitty if they like kitty cats. He looks like uh, want, it wants to 
participate in the OS World Cup who didn't have enough uh, team members because the kittens <laughs> aren't, right, aren't in the top 5k yet. Well, that's just the pain it is sometimes. And coming into the match, we do it is a free mod pick, so two players of each team need to pick a mod either hard rock hit or hidden or a combination of both. And that, it seems to be hidden only. <laughs> yeah, it does look like we're only taking hidden. Also, don't worry about the IDs, guys. That's from 09. It's super old. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right. Only hidden's coming in, even uh, just by complete contrast comparing it to the South Korea match where we only saw a hard rock coming in uh, on the entire team actually. So in this case we do have the two safe nomads and the two sacrificial lamps on hidden. Yeah and this is a song that you wouldn't actually expect to see too much hidden on in my opinion but then again you know whatever works for you. Yeah, Hidden is actually going to be the safer uh, uh, option as long as you're comfortable with these kind of maps. While Hamburg is a little bit harder to deal with. But this map does have the random, uh, really big uh, jumps coming out of nowhere. I mean, it does fit the music, but. Uh, it's subjective whether or not it fits that much of a difference in spacing, or it will run that kind of difference. And we do see that kind of pattern three or four times throughout the map, which is the key point to either lose or, or keep your combo, to potentially get the win. And the first one is gonna come up pretty soon. Alright, actually the second one, I think we already saw the first one. Actually, it looks like Indonesia's doing pretty good here. I need that miss by Synchro Star. It's definitely gonna cost him quite a lot, but... The full screen uh, triangles. We will see a drop from the Netherlands side as well. Um, is that a hen... Um, actually, I don't know how you pronounce that. Amnesia? Amnesia? I, I just call it Amnesia, yeah. Just yeah. call it like it's Amnesia without the H. But SJ Sama and Amnesia both missing on the full screen uh, square there. And the Indonesian, Indonesians are still keeping their 4 way C. Really good pick by them. One break coming in from Moodbreaker, fitting his name on the uh, full screen triangle jump. But there's plenty of jumps coming up for the rest of the team to break on. The ending does feature once again another full screen jump followed by some... Uh, by actually not that much of a consistent rhythm at the end, where you actually can die if you miss the full screen jump. So please watch out for a synchro star. Oh, excuse me. That does look like this will be a uh, victory for Indonesia, and that will bring us to tiebreaker hype. I think. Yeah, if that's definitely a tiebreaker. Congrats to Indonesia for bringing it this far, tying it up once again, and getting another tiebreaker. Well, it definitely was the better choice to pick a map that comfortable on and not the, fa the Twitch favorite Blumenkrantz map. I completely accept it in this case. And now we'll at least see a tiebreaker, which is just almost as hype as Blumenkrantz, I'd say. Well, this tiebreaker is a 162 BPM. So a rather low BPM, but the interesting fact about the map is that it's really technical. 
bunch of sliders, uh, streams, which uh, change spacing a lot. So you see stream jumps and so on. And the sliders are gonna be the most important part of the map. The repeat sliders especially, because you can miss on them extremely easily. Score V2 is going to take your accuracy on sliders into account. Whether you hit them on time or not. And it's gonna give you 150 or so 300 respectively. So in Very this true. case... Yeah, seeing good accuracy on this map is really rare. And the closest we've seen, or we've come to an SS, double S, was actually my aim sucks in the in one of the previous matches. We found the three 100s, 150 and one miss. Which is just a testament to being one of the best accuracy players in the game. And it's gonna be interesting how far Netherlands and Indonesia is gonna come into this map. Seatrot, uh, who do you think is gonna win this? I mean, Obviously, Netherlands is the higher high seeded team, but Indonesia has shown pretty well performance, pretty good performances. I feel like if it, comes down, if it comes down to consistency, I, I still feel the Netherlands might have this one. Indonesia definitely showing that they don't want to lose, though. They're definitely fighting for this victory, and they pulled it back. So, like, there's a good chance that they can t walk away with this, but if the Netherlands can keep their stuff together and just remain calm in this tiebreaker, they should have this. Indeed, I would also um, give them the advantage on this one. Plus, uh, the tiebreaker is actually contrary, uh, a contrast to most maps in the map group. It's really tactical. And even though it's only like, around 5 stars and 5 minutes long, it's extremely technical, which underrates its star value, just like most of the maps in the map group. Uh, but the important thing is that usually people on on a lower level of play don't play that many technical maps. Technical maps get really popular when you when you get uh, really good at the game, and then you have technical maps to test a lot of type of skill sets, which is jerky mouse movements or jerky talent movements, and just being really good at keeping rhythm, which uh, is gonna. Design, be the factor, the dividing line between good and bad players, or well, good and decent players, let's put it that way, because they are, these players, or everyone performing and uh, playing in the order we is really good coming this far into O's. They, uh, they invested so many playing hours to get this far. Oh, for and sure, man. Shows. And Netherlands has changed so much in terms of rosters throughout the years. I've watched their team. Um, Netherlands and Norway, for that matter, their rosters have just changed so dramatically. Um, Netherlands and Norway used to be really, really, really scary, and I feel like they're starting to get back to that point. Um, I mean, obviously you have um, people in the Netherlands that you've known for quite some time, like Hashiro and Synchrostar. Um, and uh, I do believe SJ Sama might be from last year as well. Um, the Amnesia one, like, he might have been playing last year, but my memory doesn't stick out as much. And I apologize if I'm, like, completely going over you. You can feel free to yell at me later. I, I take I take screen requests. No problem. <laughs> oh, God, it's completely fine. Well, this is going to be really, really interesting uh, coming with this. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rely on your Citra to hype it up in case he gets really close. Oh, for sure. I, I'm all good about that, man. I want to see, I want to see down to the wire, man. Uh, those are the best type of battles, and like we've seen so many down to the wire fights already in this group stage. This has been one of the most exciting group stages in terms of just like how things are going. Yeah, actually, as a player, I really like this map pool out of the last few years the most. Because it wasn't uh, such a case of 8-way tie FCs all the time. Uh, because the maps are pretty easy and are just, you know, harder maps in uh, in pretty much the same style of harder map, but just on an easier platform. But this time around, you have so much uh, diversity in the map pool. I really appreciate the map pool selectors trying to put as much into the map pool as possible. Yeah, and you're seeing representations of not only just the high-end meta and the high approach rate, and stuff like that. You're also seeing calls back to older mapping, lower approach rates, because, I mean, at the end of the day, being able to play the low approach rates is just as much a skill as being able to play the highs. Indeed. Uh, there's so many different skill sets in O's you can actually test with a map pool that uh, some map pools just don't do justice uh, to some players. 
they really don't do the players justice or where they invested so many hours to learn specific things uh, or specific maps and approach rates and they don't even get to show that off and take advantage of it. Exactly. I mean, like, <clears throat> excuse me again. In all honesty, like, people that are able to play the easy mod accurately need to be given some kind of, like, you are awesome bad because that stuff is not easy in the slightest. Indeed, and um, it's all about practice on those mods. But it's also about practice in this map coming in, the slider mm -hmm. heavy uh, technical map. How well did these teams prepare for this map? We will actually see an early break from SJ Sama on the Netherlands side, which is going to give that initial lead over to Indonesia. Definitely, probably making them feel really good at this point. Going into this, bringing it to Tiebreaker in the first place. They definitely have the momentum shift in their favor at the moment. Now, can they capitalize on that momentum and keep it going and pull a victory? To be fair, I wouldn't really expect a full combo or perhaps or if full combos are coming in, only two at most. Because this map is really hard to see. On five minutes and then adding the tournament stress to it, it's just going to make it really hard for both teams. Yeah, we will see Genjitsu actually uh, get a drop there on the Indonesia side. Um, score still in their favor at the moment. Kaishiro also finding himself a miss. Not a really good situation to be in. There's three full combos on Indonesia's side at this moment, which means they're in a very good spot here. We only see one full combo from Amnesia at the moment. And, well, no, two. I'm sorry. Jackie Lim 5 actually holding full combo as well at this moment. But things are still looking in Indonesia's favor at the moment. One thing I really don't like about the situation currently for the Netherlands is that they're missing Synchro Star, who's actually pretty good at these kind of maps, and uh, will definitely perform really well on it, especially accuracy-wise. But he didn't play, or he's not gonna play because he's not feeling safe as he never played the tiebreaker. Didn't expect to come to this kind of situation. And that's the worst kind. Of, that's the worst kind of not being able to play the tiebreaker. You should always practice the tiebreaker to any teams that are listening to the World Cup right now. Please. Play the tiebreaker. It might seem completely pointless. You might think your skills are too impressive to even worry about a tiebreaker situation. But if you don't play the tiebreaker, these kind of situations hit you and then you're just like, oh no. And that could potentially cost the Netherlands this match. Yeah, it's looking really good for the Indonesian team currently. Reusa is just completely smashing this, uh, the map currently and Genjitsu as well. Unfortunately, an early miss, but the accuracy is there. And the accuracy is the most important aspect if there's almost no combos available. Yeah, Moonbreaker will find himself a miss, but uh, Ryuza and Genjitsu both have their combos very high. Ryuza might be the only full combo left in the entire match, which is impressive in its own right. Yeah, but we're coming to the second half of the map where things spice up a little bit. We do see more focus on a few streams here, and let's see how many players are gonna miss and lose accuracy actually on those. The doubles pass on the streams. Genshitsu actually missing there. These doubles are actually really tricky to sometimes aim because you gotta wait a really, really long time because it's a rather low BPM. Oh, and Nisha gonna find a miss for the Netherlands there. And Ryuza just being a legend at this moment, 1600 combo on the tiebreaker, like it's nobody's business, 98.94, trying to get that 99% accuracy, going incredibly hard for Indonesia as the points continue to skyrocket in their favor. This looks like it might be a come from behind victory from Indonesia, bringing this all the way back to tiebreaker. There is a drop by Rinsler, which could potentially cause some issues, but with very little of the map left. It looks like Indonesia is going to be able to pull this out as a victory. Huge upset for the Netherlands if this does happen. Kaishiro has managed to get to the 1400 mark in combo, which is very impressive. But Ryuza, like a legend, getting up to the 2K mark. Is he going to be able to hit it? I do believe he does. And he crosses right over that threshold. This one is going down to Indonesia, man. They worked for it. They brought it up from the behind. I love victories like this, man. The underdog taking it. Red side is the lowest seeded teams, guys. 
So Netherlands was in all favor to win this, but Indonesia said, no, not today. This is our victory and we're gonna have it our way. And as the map gets closer and closer to the end, it is very clear to see that they have managed to pull this back. I don't understand how to breathe right now, Twitch chat. This is too high. And Absolutely with that final wonderful. spin, that, oh man, yeah. In Moodbreaker writing, GG, well played at the end there. Indonesia is going to take that 4-3. Very good fight from the Netherlands. You guys did impressive. It's just the consistency there on Indonesia's side. Look at Ryuza. Like, holy crap. Two th perfect. Full combo. Just like a boss. No problem. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, this is the great, great shot there, Seatrod. I hope you. I'm at least gonna give you a bit of time, a bit of breathing room now. Uh, Ryuza definitely he, he showed up for his team, and that's that's the nature of this map. If UFC, it's that uh, I don't expect too many FCs coming in, even on on high uh, on high seeded teams or top seeded teams like uh, the USA. We only saw like a, a one FC because it's so easy to break on this map. So even something like Ryuza pulling this off, that's that's definitely on the level of one of the top teams currently. Absolutely nuts. Um, unfortunately, this wasn't too much of an important uh, match.